What's up guys, the Crimson Gamer here, and welcome to Saturdays with Crimson. So, in this episode of Saturdays with Crimson, we are going to be discussing, it. well, it's all my opinion of course, the worst five movies, or five worst movies. So, this is just going to be a thing where I, so I have selected on my noteboard here, um, after some, you know, Think about some older movies I've watched, thinking about a lot of things I didn't really like, a lot of movies that I went to see and regretted going to see and stuff like that. So um, I got my list of five right here. So okay, here we go. Number five would have to be The Last Airbender. For those of you who do not know what The Last Airbender is, is it is an anime that focuses on, you know, like all the elements of magic and stuff, like earth, fire, air and stuff. So, um, this was the film based off of the anime and it was The Last Airbender. Um, so like, when I went to see the film, I had a lot of high expectations because I really did like that Last Airbender anime and I was hoping the film could live up to the expectations that it had. And, you know, I was kind of disappointed because I feel like there's a lot they missed out and they kind of made the story a bit confusing. And it didn't keep a lot of the aspects that the anime had and some a lot of the aspects that everyone liked about the anime. Like, they had Aang in it and everything, but there were some characters that were left out, there were some important parts of the story that were left out, and, you know... I feel like the movie could have been so much better if they would have incorporated the ideas that they missed and didn't add all this extra filler crap. So, that's number five. Um, let me get a bit closer here. Number four would be 2012. I'm pretty sure all of you know what 2012 is due to them claiming 2012 was going to be the year the Earth was going to be destroyed. Like, it was another one of those theories that the world was going to end and stuff, saying it was going to end in 2012, like December or something, certain time. The thing with that is, they never know when the Earth is going to end. You can't know the exact date and time that's going to happen. Anyways, but onto the film. Um, they made this film basically just to, you know, it was basically fan service to, like, the theory of 2012 being the final year of existence. So they kind of did this, and it was like a movie about the apocalypse, about the world actually ending in 2012 and you know so the problem I had with this movie is like it incorporated like a lot of theories wanted to scare people like the world's ending as you know it everything's falling the earth's breaking cars are falling into the ground the entire cities are crumbling that I, I liked that aspect of it it was like a really great part in all honesty it had a lot of good character developments, it had a lot of relationship developments, like you had like the man with the wife and sons, they kept running into more people on the road, that take planes to get out of an area because they were deteriorating so quickly, but you know, those were only some of the good parts about it. What I didn't like about it is the fact that it really made no sense at all, like they, they didn't even explain to you why the earth was being destroyed, it just was falling apart, maybe it had a few hints here and there, but they never actually gave the full thing on why the Earth was being destroyed. So, that was really one of the, the, the biggest problem, in all honesty, why I didn't really like it. So, there was no explanation. You saw, like, at the beginning, it showed, like, something of, like, earthquakes and stuff, but that didn't, like, we, some people don't get the clues to that stuff. Like, you see an earthquake, but what does that have to do with the Earth being destroyed? So, that was a flaw with the film. No one really understood, like, oh, I just dropped my notebook. No one really understood why the Earth was being destroyed in the first place. So, 2012 was my number four pick, and I just lost my films. Oh, dear, where did they go? Okay. Let me just quickly go back here. Okay, here we go. All right, so, 2012 is number four. Number five with the last damn better. So, number three. Are you ready for this? Number three of my choice was The Lone Ranger, a 2012 film directed by Gore Verbinski starring Johnny Depp and Army Hammer. See, this is a game that, um, 
not a game, what am I saying? This was a film that I had high expectations for because I've always been a Lone Ranger fan. I even named my Xbox gamer tag after the Lone Ranger. I was expecting, you know, I watched the old radio show, I watched the old films, all the old movies, and I was a really big fan of it, so I had some high expectations. They brought, even brought in Johnny Depp, who is known for a lot of roles nowadays in Hollywood. So I was hoping that it would do really good. So I went to the theater to watch it. And... You know, it was good for maybe about the first half hour. Like, a lot of development. You saw... Uh, I don't know the guy's name anymore. The guy that... The Lone Ranger's real name. I know him by the Lone Ranger. You saw his development on how he all started. His brother and a bunch of other sheriffs got killed. He wanted to just get revenge and stuff. Like, that made sense. But the more they dragged it on, like, the movie was really long, and it was longer than it really needed to be. They continued to drag on the film. Like I said, like, the first 40 minutes were the best parts of the film. That's not true. The ending scene was really good as well. But, like, what I'm saying is, if they wanted to perfect an old Western Lone Ranger film, they could have done better than what they did, and they, they dragged it on too long, like I said, and really, the story didn't make that much sense like I said they, like they gave the basis he won revenge for his brother but like they added in all this extra stuff that really didn't need to because Tonto he didn't really have that much of an origin story in the original and the film was trying to focus on the Lone Ranger avenging his brother so they added in all this extra stuff that really didn't need to be in this film if they wanted to include all that stuff they could have just done a sequel in that having like Tonto's story but the fact that they crammed all of that stuff together is what made most people hate the film. It didn't do well in the box office, so I can see why they dragged it on too long, added in stuff that didn't need to be. So yeah, that was number three, The Lone Ranger. Now number two, it's probably one some of you will like for me putting, and some of you will probably hate for me putting, and that would have to be, are you ready for this? Number two, The Amazing Spider-Man. For those of you who do not know, Amazing Spider-Man is a Marvel film. No, it's not a Marvel film. I lied. The original Spider-Mans were Marvel with um, Sam Raimi as the director. But then with uh, Mark Webb when he directed The Amazing Spider-Man, which is a reboot of the Spider-Man film series after the original actors and directors did not want to return for a Spider-Man 4. So the rights to Marvel were given to Sony, and they decided to make The Amazing Spider-Man. So it was a reboot of the Spider-Man franchise, and, you know, you know, there were some things I liked about the movie, but there were very few things I actually liked. Most of them were all just negative thoughts about the film. So, like, you get the origin story of Peter Parker, and it's a lot different. It's more focused on the actual comics than the originals were. The originals kind of distanced themselves from the comics a little bit, so... But that's one thing I did like, is they were closer with the comic books and The Amazing Spider-Man, but they kind of also, at the same time, they were kind of too close. Some things about the comics I didn't like are things that they put into the film. For one, they did change something that I wasn't a big fan of. The way Uncle Ben died, they ended up making him get killed. It wasn't by Sandman anymore. It was by some, just like, some bank robber, and he shot him for no reason, really. Um, and like the original, then he accidentally shot him when he just wanted the car and stuff, so it's something I didn't really like. And the fact is they changed the villain, like they changed it from the Green Goblin to the Lizard. It's like they were purposely avoiding the original villains because, you know, I don't really know why actually. So they were just avoiding the original villains, but no, that's actually not really that true because the Green Goblin was featured in the second one, but that's not the point. Like, they added in all this stuff where Kurt Connors, who was supposed to be just a teacher, he ended up working at Oscorp, and the way Peter got his bite was different. He ended up getting bitten by a spider at Oscorp instead of getting bit by the one spider at the museum. So, like, they changed some things that I really wasn't a big fan of the change. So, like, yeah, I'm not entirely... Yeah, so that's basically my thoughts on The Amazing Spider-Man. Um, they avoided stuff from the originals that they really shouldn't have because it was some of these things were really necessary like dude changing a lot of like things like the occupation of Kirk Connors and like Oscorp having a bigger role than it should and they didn't even have Harry in it Harry Osborn wasn't even in it they replaced um 
Mary Jane Watson with Gwen Stacy. Like, they put people that shouldn't have been in there. Like, Gwen Stacy, yeah, she's in the Marvel comics, and she's in the originals, but she's not supposed to have a role like that. She's not supposed to be Peter Parker's love interest. It's supposed to be Mary Jane Watson. And the fact that they did that kind of was disrespectful, in all honesty. But that's all just my opinion, so no offense to the makers of the film. That's just my opinion, I stand by that opinion. So, number two was Amazing Spider-Man. And number one, for the absolutely worst movie I've ever seen, is a movie that I have no positive feedback on whatsoever. It's all negative. And that would have to be Dragon Ball Evolution. So, all of you, when you hear the name Dragon Ball, I'm sure all of you know what it is. It is a really popular anime across the world. Not just Japan, not just Canada, not just the States. Worldwide, everyone knows Dragon Ball. And if you don't, what the hell are you doing with your life? <laughs> Anyways, oh, sorry, I just spit. So Dragon Ball Evolution was a live-action film. They tried to adapt the story of Dragon Ball and put it into the film, but it really just didn't turn out well because, like, Dragon Ball, it's supposed to be have, like, some modern areas, but it's, like, a modern time, but, like, you're all martial arts in a certain area, and that's where, like, Goku and Krillin and all of them are in. But, like, the way they did it was Goku's father was still alive in it, and Goku wasn't a Saiyan, as far as I know, at least, because they didn't really explain much because it was all confusing. Goku was just a regular person, then Piccolo was also... I don't think he was original, but he, like... was still in the Mechian, I'm pretty sure, but he wasn't really that great of a villain. He wasn't as strong as he was supposed to be. And, plus, Piccolo's not really the main villain at first. In the first arc, it's supposed to be, um... The name's not coming to me. Crap, this little short guy, he'll probably comment if you recognize his name. But he wasn't supposed to be the villain, and the fact that, like, everything was so corny. They tried to release a Dragon Ball film at a time when they shouldn't tell, a time when, like, the CGI and special effects just started coming in. And, come on, Dragon Ball doesn't need to be live action. If you want to watch Dragon Ball, watch Dragon Ball, watch the anime. You don't need to put live action, because that is most, most of the time, Putting animes into live-action films is normally what screws them up. For example, like I said, The Last Airbender. That screwed it over. But this, 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 this gave Dragon Ball a new name. This, like, got a lot of negative feedback. The film wasn't great. No no one really liked the film, and it was kind of, makers even kind of got disappointed about the film. So, like, it wasn't really a great film. It was kind of boring, in all honesty. It really didn't make sense. A lot of plot holes. The fact that they tried to modernize it was kind of awkward and weird. So, yeah. Dragon Ball Evolution, number one. So, anyways, this has been Saturdays with Crimson. These are my, Those were the five worst movies, in my opinion. In my opinion. You may have different opinions, and if you do, come on. You can share. Comment in the description below. I'm curious to see what you guys think. So that was my opinion on them. So thanks you guys for watching this video. If you like what you see and you want more, click the like button down below and leave a subscription as well. I would love it. And as always, I'll see all of you in the next video. Peace out.